There's only one place to find the most recognized brand in carpet, Stainmaster, and that's at Lowe's. Right now, get free basic installation with the purchase of Stainmaster carpet and pad $4.99 or more. Lowe's, home to any budget, home to any possibility. Install available in-store only. Requires non-refundable site assessment fee. Fee is credited to final project price if bought through Lowe's. More charges may apply. Not available in all areas. See Lowe's.com for details, exclusions, and licensure. Ballot 219-413, U.S. only. Warning, sometimes we start cussing before we can even make it through the fucking profanity warning. This week's episode of The Scathing Atheist is brought to you by HelloFresh, ZipRecruiter, and by the new alternative to science-based travel, Prayer Planes. Prayer Planes, because, oh, what's that? Suddenly you want to trust science again for now instead of prayer? That's what the fuck I thought. And now, The Scathing Atheist. Hi, this is Mike Cheatham with the Rational Black Thought Podcast, where each week we go through current events through the eyes of a black atheist, skeptic, and humanist. Though I've only been doing this for about a year, it has been long enough to prove conclusively that we did, in fact, evolve from filthy monkey men and women who fucked and had babies little filthy monkey boys and little filthy monkey girls who grew up and fucked, but not in the same family, except in Kentucky, where they did, which is why people from Kentucky never evolved and are still filthy monkey men to this very day. What else explains whatever the fuck Mitch McConnell is? Thursday. It's February 24th. And when you're an atheist podcaster, every day is Fat Thursday. I, oh, only the <laughs> Thursdays. I have no illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And from Joe Rogan's New Jersey, Ann Arbor, Michigan, and Waycross, Georgia, this is The Scathing Atheist. On this week's episode, Florida picks the worst and only way you're allowed to say gay now. Mike Lindell tries to set up some hell evangelism. <laughs> And Ray Comfort will tell teenagers that they're as bad as murderers. But first, the diatribe. I grew up on an unpaved cul-de-sac just outside of Detroit, and while gravel roads were considered a downside for motorists, homeowners, and skateboarders alike, my siblings and I were pretty thrilled to have such a ready selection of collectible rocks so near at hand. I mean, you know, some of them were pretty good rocks. Now, as an adult, I, I don't know that I can peer all the way back into my childhood mind far enough to tell you what made a rock good, but it was a universally recognized quality rather than a matter of taste. Like when you found a really good rock, everyone agreed it was, they got jealous. Everybody was jealous of your awesome rock. Their value was so broadly accepted, in fact, that they formed the backbone of the little sub-economy between my siblings and myself and the other kids in the neighborhood. You had your collection of good rocks, and anytime you wanted to cut in line for something or maybe play with somebody's remote-controlled car, you just whip them out like currency and set about making a deal. The problem, of course, was that whatever inherent value a really good rock has fades away at some point along the road to maturity, and that's a fact that my brother and I learned when the guy in the ice cream truck told us to fuck off. Now, now my memory of this is, is hazy at best. I know it more as a family legend than as an actual recollection, so I'm pretty sure the poor ice cream truck guy was as polite about it as he could be, but the end result of it was me and my brother bursting into the living room in tears because the ice cream man wouldn't even haggle with us about the proper push-pop to really good rock exchange ratio. At this point, of course, my poor mom had to patiently explain how value works. It was my first lesson in supply and demand, and because my mother is so fond of retelling that story, it also came to symbolize the innocent naivety of youth. The very image of economic stupidity in my mind has pretty much always been the effort to trade common rocks for money. And that made it all the more impactful when a listener shared a link with me this week to an $85 collection of common rocks on Goop. It's called the Goop Medicine Bag. But, you know, by medicine, it means rocks. 
and it allowed me, assuming my mom's memory on the year was accurate, to isolate the exact point in my intellectual development when I officially passed Goop customer on the scale of understanding. It was age six. And it actually makes me wish we'd thought to tell the ice cream man that our rocks might relieve his sciatica because otherwise we may have got some fucking ice cream. So, yeah, I had to check the website on this one. Not so much because I doubted Gwyneth Paltrow would call rocks medicine and ad copy, but more because there's just a level of stupid you have to stare at in disbelief for a minute. So I did. You, you just see a picture of eight mostly polished rocks. 85 bucks, you only get eight fucking rocks. They're, they're different colors and they have a cheap looking drawstring bag. And the ad copy explains that, quote, these are crystals to encourage clarity, serenity, courage, creative power and emotional strength. End quote. How do they work? Well, the ad copy goes on to explain that you simply, quote, set a daily intention over your stone of choice and carry it with you for a physical reminder of where you're heading. End quote. Could that not be done with literally any rock or rock sized object at hand? Well, sure, but not medicinally. Hello? Of course, even if you don't buy into this whole talking to rocks makes you more courageous crap, the copy still has something to offer you. Quote, not of the spirit set, test this set as a pretty addition to your workspace or vanity, end quote. In other words, one way or the other, there's still some pretty awesome rocks. Now, give me a fucking push pop. But but the silliness doesn't end there, right? The site goes on to explain that these rocks are, I swear this is real, quote, made exclusively for goop. The, that silicon dioxide wasn't going to just cool for any damn body. Right. And, and then because they clearly know what kind of idiots they're dealing with here, they feel the need to warn the prospective buyer that, quote, due to the organic nature of the crystals, colors and sizes may vary. And but, but don't worry, it doesn't matter. All colors and sizes are equally effective in terms of emotional strength encouragement, I guess. So that part's not going to matter in the long run. And look, <sighs> Goop customers are victims. Right, They deserve our sympathy rather than our scorn. I really wish they'd make it easier on us by not selling out the goddamn medicine rock bag in the time it took me to write this fucking diatribe. But they are victims. The ad copy clearly bent over backwards to stay just this side of a legal claim. Rocks could, after all, help you remember to be more courageous. But pawning rocks off on people with lies about their value, crime or no, should carry a mark of shame no less than conning people with stock or phone scams. When I did it, I was a six-year-old who wanted a fucking popsicle. What the hell is your excuse, Gwyneth? They're talking about your Jesus. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a special news bulletin. Joining me for headlines tonight are the solid and gaseous to my liquid Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick. Fellas, are you ready to matter? It's true. The gassier I am, the more I matter. That was. <laughs> Maybe, but have you tried taking a solid in front of someone? <laughs> They'll remember you on their deathbed. No, that's true. <laughs> that's, that's true. true. That's fair. You lock eyes. That's me. You people say it's unpleasant in the elevator now. But yeah. <laughs> in our lead story tonight, the FFRF filed a federal lawsuit against the Cabell County Board of Education in West Virginia this week in hopes that courts would find whoopsie an insufficient justification for hosting a mandatory religious revival in the middle of a public school day again. Again. Yeah. That's right. Last month, students at Huntington High School were ushered into a presentation by Nick Walker Ministries during which, according to Nick Walker's accidental confession on Facebook, quote, 50 students gave their lives to Jesus, end quote. Now, it said confession identified this is a voluntary club meeting, but according to students, it was voluntary only in the sense that, like, they also could have opted for suspension. <laughs> cool. What are you in for, fighting? What are you in for, being Jewish? <laughs> <laughs> Still? Again? Yeah, yeah after right. that lesson? <laughs> were you paying attention? Yeah, now, when word got out about this shit, the school tried to characterize it as a mistake and added that they, quote, hope that will never happen again, end quote, which sounds suspiciously like what they said when virtually this same shit happened in 2017. 
Yeah. They they hope. It's you. Right. <laughs> exactly. But like also, how the fuck is it a mistake? <laughs> right? It's, it's not like there was some church across town that accidentally got a physics demonstration from Dr. Science that day. <laughs> right? It's not like the church group said they were going to talk about the dangers of drunk driving and accidentally brought their come to Jesus notes. The principal signed off on the show. The principal was there. Right. And so even if he didn't know what was going to happen beforehand, he knew what was going to happen when it fucking happened. And he didn't cut the microphone and excuse the fucking students. So, no, it wasn't a mistake. And even if it was First Amendment violations, don't generally get written off on the basis of a whoopsie. Yeah, I get it. My high school accidentally quartered a bunch of soldiers in our houses. It was a whole thing. Really, really wrecked junior year. Let me tell you. Now, for their part, by the way, students were also unimpressed by this half-ass apology. When the school tried to justify it by pointing out that the assembly took place during non-instructional time, students were like, oh, homeroom is non-instructional? Then I'm sure you won't mind if we use it to stage a walkout to protest your theocratic bullshit, would you? So that's what they did. These kids are the best. This is awesome. They are the best, yeah. Oh, yeah, the kid who organized the walkout sent this glorious notice to the faculty that read in part, quote, if a revivalist Christian sermon can be held for students, we claim the absolute ability to protest the violation of our rights that accompanied this sermon during the same apparently pointless period. And <laughs> quote. Oh, it's pointless. Yeah. So we're just going to start an atheist militia during the pointless yeah. homeroom. <laughs> it's going to be badly regulated just for the record. But <laughs> well, we'll, we'll totally put the guns away at the second bell uh, when laws start right. counting again and it's no longer pointless. Right. There you go. Cool. Now, of course, as awesome as the student response was, it wasn't enough. And that's where the FFRF comes in. Like I said, this wasn't the first time the district made a mistake like this one. So the Freedom from Religion Foundation filed a suit on behalf of the kid that I just quoted, along with a number of other parents and students, including a fucking Jewish family, by the way. Right. They're seeking damages in the amount of like one dollar per plaintiff plus cost and attorney fees. But given the nonchalance of the school over this shit, I feel like dragging them through the courts is the only recourse left. Now, of course, honestly, if the fucking SCOTUS got a hold of this case, revival class would probably be mandatory in 18 states by October. So who the fuck even knows? I guess we'll keep you posted on this one. Instead of the dollar, I mean, I want the, the administrators to all do an Islamic revival. I think they should yeah. have yeah. <laughs> accidentally have an atheist speaker show up. Yeah. yeah. And in let the bodies hit the Florida news. <laughs> We've got an update from last week's story about the so-called don't say gay bill from Florida. And spoiler alert, it's from Florida, so it's worse than we thought. And that's an amendment that would require schools to out gay students to their parents. Wow. Even if, explicitly, even if there's known risk to the child. And that was added to the bill. That was added to the note. Don't say gay bill this week. Fuck sake. So, okay. So what do you call the version of Godwin's law where the longer I disagree with someone, the more they literally become a fucking Nazi? Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Originalism, constitutional law. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Now, I should point out that the bill already had a out your gay students rule in it. It just didn't have a time limit on that rule. So this amendment was filed by bill sponsor state representative joe harding who by the way looks like he thinks he beat the system by still getting his hair cut at cuts for kids <laughs> he looks so <laughs> stupid he looks like he definitely just now shat himself and he's proud about it and yes. he always tell somebody right now he looks like somebody just announced that there had been a murderer and he replied and i helped like the shake and bake kid <laughs> <laughs> right so now, thanks to this amendment, the bill would require schools to out gay students to their parents within six weeks of learning the student is any sexual orientation other than straight. But gays love to accessorize. Plus, the armband is even pink. Don't they like yeah. pink? I thought they like mm -hmm. pink. There's a lot of armband stuff this week. Fuck. <laughs> but it gets worse. I literally don't believe you, Eli. Oh, well, get, get ready. Get ready. So... The original bill had an exemption to their student outing rule for cases where there's a suspicion of the information leading to, and again, quote, abuse, neglect, or abandonment. They changed that is what you're saying. Yeah. This amendment removes that exemption. It's fucking horrible. And advises teachers instead to, quote, instead develop a plan using all available governmental resources 
to tell parents their child's sexual orientation through an open dialogue in a safe, supportive, and judgment-free environment that respects the parent-child relationship and protects the mental, emotional, and physical well-being of the child, end quote. What? So, for context, my guidance counselor in middle school was Mrs. E., the health teacher, who once told us that if we hung around gas stations to get high off the fumes, we would explode. <laughs> it increases the chances. They it's true. want that person to make a plan to out-gay kids to their parents that they know are going to be abusive. Oh, God, Jesus. Which, okay, but hold on. I think I found a loophole because it says a supportive and judgment-free environment that respects the parent-child relationship. So that's not that's not Florida. Oh, right. yeah. You got to put them on a bus. Yeah, yeah. What are they, they're describing fucking Narnia. Just like, well, if this doesn't work out, you go to a fantasy world where everything's awesome. And it's like, so, but like the way I read it, we rescue that kid and bring him to a loving family somewhere else if the kid wants that. So cool. That's, a, that's actually a good little section of the yeah, law. Yeah, right. Accidentally. I do like that. Yeah. Nailed it. We got an ally guidance teacher who just kills their dad. I was just following the law. I don't know what you I guys was, are talking I made about. a plan. It seemed like the right plan. <laughs> I used all governmental resources. So, yeah. One last reminder of the purpose of these bills. It's to kill and torture gay children. Yes. Right? Like all Republican policy, the cruelty is the point. And while legally, I need to be very careful about what I say about this. Um, I can say this. It should be a lot more dangerous and scary to propose and support these laws than it should be to be a gay kid. Yeah, that statement, by the way, was the compromise of a lot of back and forth with Andrew. This a lot week. of back and forth. A lot, forward, of, a lot of hurt feelings. Yep. We are not suggesting any murders. Nope. We sure aren't. Nope. Technically. And in not the time for wordplay news, honestly. In response to a tragic <laughs> series of sex crimes perpetrated by a coach at a public school. The Ohio House of Representatives passed a bill that would create a sexual abuse prevention curriculum to help address that problem. This very important piece of legislation only has two hurdles remaining. One, the Republican Party and two, Christianity. And that's why we do this fucking show. The Republican Party and Christianity ruin everything. And that apparently includes literally the prevention of children being sexually abused. That yep. gets ruined by Republicans and Christians and Christian right Republicans. I mean, look, Christianity standing in the way of child sex abuse prevention is like Philip Morris standing in the way of tobacco regulation, though, isn't it? That's right. Exactly. Yeah. What's happening here. Yes. Fuck. I'm sorry, Heath. Are you saying that sexual abusers of children don't get their own lobby? Where's your sense of laissez faire? Can I say that? <laughs> <sighs> yeah. So. The bill is being called Aaron's Law, named after a survivor who became an activist across the country, helping to get laws like this one on the books. Under the proposed law, the Ohio Department of Education would provide school districts with resources to develop a curriculum, and schools would provide kids with information about counseling. There's nothing even remotely controversial about this bill. Nope. There's even a provision that requires the school to notify parents about the lessons and let the parents review the material. The, the law basically just says... Sexual abuse is bad. You should try stopping it at the school districts, please, at least a little somehow. Well, the Center for Christian Virtue has a problem with that. And you got to wonder what Christian virtue means if that's the case. And that's the case. That group has been successfully delaying the bill's progress for a while now, and they're hoping to shut it down completely. Well, you know, as we learned on this week's horrifying episode of God Awful Movies, a lot of Christian virtue relies on being sexually assaulted. So, yeah, this tracks. This tracks. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Like, would your whole thing relies on mentally torturing kids until they're afraid that a goat monster is going to burn them alive for masturbating? I can see how any child abuse prevention starts to look like a slippery slope to you. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I can see how you get confused by the word virtue. It's confusing mm -hmm. if that's your thing. Yeah. You're idiots. So, the Christian group that's opposing the sexual violence prevention plan. I'm going to repeat that. There's a Christian group opposing a sexual violence prevention plan. And mm -hmm. they're arguing that the definition of age appropriate material isn't clear enough in the bill. And they're also arguing that the curriculum would violate Ohio's abstinence only sexual education policy. You know what? I'm going to repeat that last part too. They're arguing that a curriculum about sexual violence prevention prevention needs to teach it 
via the concept of abstinence. Kids need to abstain from being victims of sexual violence. Yeah, they just get up there. Would you ride on a plane that has a 3% chance of raping you? Sorry, our, our bit doesn't work here. I'm, 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 yeah. Fuck. Right. So, but what's amazing is that they're pointing that out as something other than a problem with their abstinence only policy. <laughs> right. Right. I mean, like this sex ed program would prevent us from talking about sex abuse prevention. Seems like it should be our argument. We're saying that. We right. say that you're <laughs> evil. We say that. Yes. And. Just circling back to that other hurdle I mentioned, the Republican Party. Yes, the GOP controls the Ohio House where the bill already passed. They also control the Senate. But just for the record, out of 99 possible votes in the Ohio House, there were eight people who voted against this bill. All eight were Republican. What? Not surprising, I suppose. Fortunately for very basic ethics, it looks like there's enough bipartisan support to pass in the Ohio Senate, too. But... That vote isn't happening in the Ohio Senate because a bunch of Republican state senators met with the Christian virtue people and agreed to let those Christian virtue people submit their own version of the bill, which they've done now. The Christian version is abstinence only abuse prevention, whatever the fuck that means. It doesn't allow even the mention of contraception or abortion access. It requires that teachers use the phrase Sexual activity is only appropriate in marriage at some point during the lessons, and it does not allow the curriculum to mention or even imply that parents might not be trustworthy sometimes. Wow. And, of course, they want the whole thing to be optional with parents being able to remove their kids from the class, even though we know statistically about one third of sexual abusers of children are parents or other family members. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, we must protect the rights of parents to fuck over their kids is the Republican platform yeah. these days, right? You know? Basic freedoms. Well, I, I guess after six years of defending Trump, they're just protecting sexual predators instinctually at this point. Sure. Right? Yeah. It's the guy standing across from the bus stop. Get over here. You're mayor now. Yeah. How is this complicated? Some freedoms are bad. You shouldn't be free to do <laughs> shitty, evil thing. Why is that? Whatever. Okay. I just a uh, quick message for the Ohio Senate. I know you're listening. Big fans. New rule. No meeting with Christianity about sexual abuse prevention. That's like the Philip Morris <laughs> tobacco prevention thing. That's like the plot of The Departed when Matt Damon is the crooked cop helping out the mob. And then he gets the job of trying to find himself inside the police force. Don't do that. That's insane. And just in case you're still confused, here's the exact words from David Mann, the policy director of that Christian group you met with. Quote, it's not like if we oppose the bill, we're for abusing children. Is it? So, yeah, well, is it okay. that like that? <laughs> it is like that. Okay. I'll grant that he's probably not lying. I, mm. Maybe he's not for abusing children. For the purpose of this paragraph. For the purpose of this <laughs> moment, I will grant that. But if you ever say it's not like I'm for the sexual abuse of a child, You've done something wrong, right? Uh, you yep. might not have abused. The you might not be. You're doing something wrong in your life. Speaking of which, uh, I asked U.S. Congressman Jim Jordan of Ohio for a comment about the story with the coach who sexually abused a bunch of kids at a public school in Ohio. And nobody around him did anything about it for a long time. And it was really horrible and tragic. Uh, Mr. Jordan has not responded huh. to my uh, huh. my ask for a comment. So weird. And while we eagerly await that response, we're going to pause for a quick word from this week's first sponsor. Hello, fresh. Jim Jordan did all those things at Ohio State. Yeah, it's Jim Jordan. Dude, you got to send these back. They don't take returns. Hey, guys, what are you up to? Oh, hey, Noah. So, you know our sponsor, HelloFresh? Of course. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. You get to skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Yeah, that, yep. Right. Well, Keith wasn't paying particularly close attention to those ads, and he accidentally signed up for Cello Fresh, which yeah. delivers a cello to your door <sighs> once a week. Oh, it does. So, like, how many has he gotten so far? Nine. Oh, Wh which is it's it's way too many cellos, by the way. Mm -hmm. Like, two is fine. Three, four, maybe mm -hmm. nine, though. So, but Eli, you were already a HelloFresh customer even before they were a sponsor, right? 
I sure was, and I still am. HelloFresh offers 50 menu and market items to choose from every week, including veggie, vegan, fit and wholesome, family-friendly, and gourmet options, providing plenty of variety. Also, cellos are like... Wicked expensive. Did you guys know that? Like, so huh. yeah. expensive. Well, according to the Zagat Dining Survey, HelloFresh is 72% cheaper than a restaurant meal of the same quality, and you can save on average over $65 per month when you order HelloFresh instead of grocery shopping. That's money back in your pocket. Go to HelloFresh.com slash scathing16 and use code scathing16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. That's right. Go to HelloFresh.com slash scathing16 and use the code scathing16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Hey, either you guys need a cello? I do not. No. I got extra. Nope. A man wrote the Bible. A whore is what she wants. If it's a legitimate race. It makes you a slut, right? Hey, cooking can be fun. Hey, I'm proud of a man. This week in Massage. Well, holy hell, does the misogyny stack up when I take any time away, which is exactly why I need to take time away. It's a vicious cycle. Anyway, the story I want to share with you this week comes to us from that notorious bastion of misogyny, Bob Jones University. Now, they're far better known, I think, for their racism than for their sexism. They didn't drop their ban on interracial dating until the year 2000, so you can see why. But they're also famous for the ankle-length skirts on their cheerleaders, and they didn't start allowing female students to wear pants to class until 2018. And unlike their support for segregation and their ban on interracial dating, they've never bothered to issue an apology for any of the misogyny. Of course, with groups like Bob Jones University, sometimes you can learn as much from what they will apologize for as you can from what they refuse to. Case in point. A couple weeks ago, they were falling all over themselves in their efforts to apologize for a fashion show where Jesus wore a dress. That's right. The controversy started when design student Matthew Fox set about creating Bible-inspired designs and featured three models, one designated as Eve, another as Satan, and the third as the J-Man himself, dressed in a crown of thorns and a blood-red wrap coat that, while not actually being a dress, looked kind of like a dress. According to one scandalized observer, quote, he looked like a gay man. It is blasphemous, end quote. A group of equally shaken trustees and administrators were quick to respond to calls for an official apology. So this ostensible institution of higher learning put out an official apology where they expressed regret that a Jesus model looked, in the estimation of many, too feminine. The apology read in part, quote, in response to this egregious event, the executive leadership and board of trustees acted immediately. Our administrative and academic leadership, along with our art and design facility, have taken full responsibility to correct these problems and are making significant changes to the program itself. End quote. Now, unfortunately, they didn't go into any details on how they plan to butch up Jesus. And for the life of me, I can't even imagine what action their board of trustees even could take on this. But there you have it. 73 years to apologize for a ban on interracial dating, 73 hours to apologize for Jesus looking fabulous. Anyway, there's obviously plenty more misogyny to go over, but this is a tub I've got to kind of ease myself back into a little bit at a time. So with the promise of even bullshittier bullshit next time, I'll hand things back over to Noah, Heath, and Eli. Thank you, Lucinda. And in lock and load of crap news. I have to admit, it's easy to dismiss idiots like Pastor Greg Locke as a ridiculous clown with a Dunkin' Donuts order that belongs in a Willy Wonka sequel. But this week, <laughs> we were given the grim reminder of just how dangerous idiots like Greg Locke can be as he announced that he had the names and addresses of six witches in his church which he was given by an angel that's right folks <laughs> mccarthyism but less grounded in reality right <laughs> okay i gotta say though this makes our little piece of land right next to his church so much more goddamn fun i'm gonna call my cauldron guy and my pulley guy right? we're gonna do some yes. flying stuff uh -oh. it's gonna be fun so fun in a diatribe in which Locke all but fucks a stool like a hack 2000s comedian, <laughs> Locke gleefully announces to his congregation his new information saying, quote, we got first and last names of six witches that are in our church. And you know what's strange? Three of you are in this room right now. Three of you in the room right now. You better look in my eyeballs. 
We ain't afraid of you, you stinking witch. You devil. This is a real quote, by the way. I'm not, I'm doing a voice, yep. but this is exactly word for word. You devil worshiping Satanist witch. We cast you out in the name of Jesus Christ. We break your spells. We break your curse. We got your first name. We got your last name. We even got an address for one of you. Oh, just the one? <laughs> yep, just for one. He couldn't, you know. Five of them, he couldn't find an address yeah, on Google. Couldn't get it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you so much as cough wrong, and I'll expose you in front of everybody in this tent. What? You stinking witch. End exact <laughs> quote. If they just lay low and cough correctly he's <laughs> not gonna expose the witches right yes he's gonna let them carry on with their satanic <laughs> witching in his church i feel like he's clearly a witch right yeah. like he's a witch. <laughs> he does cough pretty weird i know some historically christian tests we could do yeah to see if greg Locke is a witch. <laughs> all right but to be fair though the only possible way to up the stakes from book burning is a literal witch hunt, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I guess tune in next yep. week to hear about Greg Locke appeasing the volcano with the flesh of a virgin. <laughs> We're going to build a bridge out of him so bad in that little <laughs> property. And look, fun as it is to make fun of Greg, let's be clear about what's actually happening here. He doesn't think there are witches in his church. He's attempting to intimidate the women of his church, right? We've had dozens of listeners tell us over the years how mortally terrified they were for having played with a Ouija board once as a kid, mm -hmm. right? He mentions burning sage at one point during his little tirade. He's just shotgunning random witchy stuff the women in his congregation might be doing to terrify them and to cow them into obedience. And from a guy who most recently, as Noah pointed out, gained national attention for holding a book burning that would and should scare anybody. Yeah. Yeah. Remember the scene in Animal Farm where the dogs finally started attacking people? It's like that. <laughs> She's like that. Yeah. <laughs> and finally tonight in Vaximum Overdrive nice. News. Fantastic. The totalitarian atheist regime in Canada continued its fascist death prevention campaign despite a bunch of big trucks that are in a snit. Mm -hmm. But they faced a brand new challenge last week. Soft Christian rectangles. Ooh. Of course, I'm talking about my pillow CEO and every cop from 1985, Mike Lindell. <laughs> he decided to support the anti-vax trucker protest by providing pillows as literal physical support for that protest. But his first attempt at a delivery got blocked at the Canadian border. So he came up with a new plan. He wants to airdrop the pillows using helicopters. <laughs> so far, it hasn't worked out. So far, he has not been able to infiltrate the nation of Canada with a secret convoy of helicopters that he hired carrying <laughs> 10,000 pillows no. that he will then airdrop. But uh, that's the stated plan uh -huh. from Mike Lindell. It is. Side note, podcast listener, we are currently in a golden era of history. Truly unprecedented where our neighbors to the north finally hate like we do here in the united yes. states have you talked to a canadian lately they are poutine throwing mad up there my friends poutine throwing mad <laughs> well like to the point where i've been offered multiple positions this week as a state-sponsored canadian hate coach <laughs> <laughs> so everything about this whole plan by lindell is a giant failure and i fucking love it he fails at everything it's, he was gonna use little he's so stupid <laughs> little parachutes <laughs> it's the best okay i'm gonna start with the first delivery attempt which was almost as stupid as the helicopter idea now just think about that relative it's almost as stupid as that lindell sent a bunch of trucks full of pillows from a factory in minnesota to canada his company by the way has a factory in Ontario, Canada. But according to Liddell, that factory doesn't really do anything anymore because mm -hmm. he got canceled in Canada over the last couple of years. So okay. he sent the trucks from Minnesota along with a film crew of unvaccinated right-wing idiots from the Right Side Broadcasting Network. So the Canadian border agents, they are heroes. They had a delightful day that day of explaining no you you actually can't come in because of 
Well, actually, the exact thing you're trying to protest is why you can't come in. <laughs> but no, no, you guys just sit tight right here, and uh, we'll check if there's an exception to that rule for you, real quick. We're gonna uh, we're gonna definitely make some real phone calls and not mime phone calls. It's definitely what we're doing is real. <laughs> It'll be super quick. Uh, we'll be right back. And they made them all sit there for hours. Oh, my God. They checked to see if they had any exemptions in the back. I have never loved customs <laughs> officials more than they I love did. those guys right now. And then they, like, fake pretended they were grabbing stuff from the back. It's mm-hmm. so good. Oh, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> following that incident, the news crew tried to claim they were being detained <laughs> because, you know, <laughs> that, that word makes them feel sexy. But... That's not how it works when you're allowed to go in all the south, including directions. Like that, that's not detained. That's just being told no. Well, it's tamed? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Lindell was not going to be deterred by this. He told the Daily Beast last week that he was going to drop the pillows into Canada from helicopters with tiny little parachutes <laughs> little for the pillows the for safety best. because that would be unsafe otherwise. Mm-hmm. Yep. Of course, that's extremely stupid, and everyone made fun of him. So now he's just very obviously lying. He's claiming it was a prank. Yes, he he punked. He uses he uses the phrase punked. He says I punked him. He think he thinks he punked the Daily Beast by making up a really stupid plan and telling the reporter about it at the Daily Beast. So you know, got him. Yeah. No, that's that's his real story. It, his actual story is that he told reporters that he was going to drop pillows with tiny little parachutes so that they, the reporters, would look stupid. <laughs> hey, Mike, you know they're not oracles, right? That they're just reporting. <laughs> Especially when you admit that you told them that. That's, yeah. Okay, but to be fair to Mike Lindell, that is a great strategy that will always work because Mike Lindell is so stupid. And so fucking crazy that if tomorrow he announced he was going to run backwards around the earth as fast as he could for an election do over, (laughs) I would believe him. I'd help him. Yeah. Yeah. So regardless of the helicopter plan, (laughs) Mike Lindell was pretty sure the protesters were going to wear through their stock of pillows that they brought and be forced to leave. The protest, but a big infusion of new pillows would really bolster their staying power. That was his strategy, especially if there were Bible scenes printed on the pillows. That's that's what he did. They they were like Noah's Ark inside of the pillow, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Now, sadly, we never got to test that theory because Justin Trudeau is a fascist dictator and he used emergency powers to authorize police to clear out. For the most part, the part of Ottawa is downtown where the majority of the protest was happening. So now there's 10,000 Bible pillows just sitting in a sad pile somewhere, Aww. hopefully in like a helicopter hangar that's really mad and they're keeping a deposit. <laughs> and before we wrap it up, here's the very important question. What else can we get Mike Lindell to do? Ooh. Like, where can we get him to show up with pillows? Because we can definitely get him to show up somewhere with pillows. Maybe run around the earth backwards, too. I, I so, okay, look, This man has a reason to carry smothering devices pretty much anywhere he goes. <laughs> and he has access to Donald Trump. <laughs> Are you sure you want us to have Eli answer that and question? Okay. Story. <laughs> okay, hear me out. Hear okay. me out. I'm ready with the bleep button. Listen. Nobody's buying the bullshit like Trudeau's thugs are killing the truckers in secret Canadian police raids harder than Lindell, right? Sure. So here's what we do. We send Lindell a gun with a single bullet in it and (laughs) then see if he'll deliver the pillows to heaven. Nope. So (laughs) Jesus Christ. That's legal. What did I just say? It's (laughs) very legal. I bet we could get him to fly into the DMZ between North and South Korea with some pillows, maybe something like that. All right. so on that obvious joke Eli made that no reasonable person could take seriously, we're going to (laughs) close the headlines for the night. Heath, Eli, thanks as always. Go to the DMZ. It's really cool there. And when we come back, we'll let a little ray of sunshine back into our lives. Oh, I've missed it. Hey, podcast listener, you want to hear a secret? Not all jobs suck. It's true. There's jobs that pay well. Jobs with flexible hours. Even jobs that you enjoy doing. Can you believe that? And the best place to hire for your awesome job is ZipRecruiter. 
Their matching technology helps you find the right people for your roles fast. And right now, you can try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash scathing. ZipRecruiter uses its powerful technology to find and match the right candidates up with your job. Then it proactively presents these candidates to you. You can easily review these recommended candidates and invite your top choices to apply for your job, which encourages them to apply faster. ZipRecruiter's technology is so effective that four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, Noah. Glan Dej. It's, it's been like three years since that joke. Man. Forever in our hearts and minds. The people's princess. Okay, find, find the right employees for your workplace with ZipRecruiter. Try it for free at this exclusive web address, ZipRecruiter.com slash scathing. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash S-C-A-T-H-I-N-G. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Because jobs don't have to suck, no matter what your uncle tells you. As humans, we are born with certain needs, food, shelter, sleep, stuff like that. Our culture then provides us with a second tier of needs that are nearly as important, coffee, Wi-Fi, cheese. But each of us carries a third tier of needs as well, a more idiosyncratic set that begin as torments, then graduate to habits, and then from habits to desires, and from desires to deepest needs. And I offer all that up as an explanation as to why we once again watched Ray Comfort videos on purpose for this week's God Awful Mini. So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? I, I don't know. Some fucking Ray Comfort video. Like he's, he's yes. a comedian oh. got smited by God in his head. <laughs> and then it's a Ray Comfort video where he's harassing people on the street. It's the same thing. Yeah, right, right. It's not even really about that. The title is She Mocks God Publicly. Yep. There it is. Yeah. Okay. I've got this <laughs> then title. this happens. So sorry. She mocks God, Jesus publicly. Then this happens. Dot, dot, dot. And yeah. you wouldn't believe what happens next. Yeah, yeah, exactly. One weird trick. And Eli, how bad was this mini? Well, if you enjoy grandma's commentary as you shuffle her roughly back to her room at the home, but you wish she always came back to Jesus, and let's be honest, she does, you will love this movie. Ray's so desperate to be relevant at this point, I'm amazed he hasn't stormed the Capitol for Jesus. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? I would. I'm going to go with best worst comment section on Ooh. YouTube. Oh, I did not have the it's balls for that. Amazing. So this video is, it starts anyway with a comedian making a joke about Jesus and Christianity being stupid and immediately getting in his head smited by God. She has a seizure and she falls down on stage. So <laughs> the comment section is just all very obvious lies by Christian people being like, something like that happened to me too. Same thing pretty much. I, and they, they tell this whole story about how <laughs> God somehow smited. Like, I was fucking my super hot Canadian girlfriend and her seven really <laughs> hot model friends at the same time. And they were like, oh my God, your dick's amazing. It is amazing. And they were they talked about that for a while. And then one of them was an atheist and she smoked a joint that was rolled with Bible paper and it burst into flame and her face exploded. Yeah. And it was amazing. Did I mention I was fucking nine women at this point? <laughs> the end. Two more showed up since I started. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. And, and speaking of which, I was going to go with best worst holy vengeance. Oh, yeah. Right. Because like God is all powerful. A joint could have walked in the room and exploded in this lady's face. Right? right. But instead, she says, you know, joke, 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 Jesus, 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 and then has a seizure from which she is fine immediately after. Right. Like, yeah. Up your fucking <laughs> game, Jesus. We're going to talk about it. But like, she was also very clearly not mocking Jesus. She just says that Jesus likes her best. Yeah. It's a very petty vengeance. Yeah. Also, she's not that famous, right? Like, do George Carlin back when he was like, yeah, right, right, yeah, exactly. A much more impactful statement <laughs> by smiting a famous comedian during an HBO special or something. Yeah, exactly. And I'm gonna go with best worst almost rescue from Ray Comfort. We've seen a lot of people try to escape Ray Comfort, and the the stopped rescue attempt. From Ray Comfort that's in this one. He's truly legendary. Yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a prank. We'll get to it. That's a prank, right? That's what's happening. <laughs> so, so, yeah, right. No, that's right. Like, yeah, yeah. I called Ray Comfort on you and now I'm standing 
there watching you have I'm to rescue suffer you, through it. Pump yeah. faking a rescue and then going away. That's, right. a, I, that's a prank somebody did in this <laughs> in this video, I'm pretty sure. So, OK, so, yeah, we're going to open the video up with the local news telling us about a, a comedian that's now out of the hospital after injuring herself on stage. And then we're going to cut to that injury, which we've already discussed. Right. Right. And then from there, we immediately cut to like an interview where someone's like, so do you think that the creator of the universe smited you on stage for mentioning his son in the mildest possible way? And she was like, no. <laughs> right. Well, and, and yeah, well, and the video is supposed to be like, see, she didn't even consider for a second the reality of of the ghost of a dead carpenter pushing her down at us like a fucking schoolyard bully. What an asshole. She deserved it. <laughs> Okay, but let's say let's say God is doing this, and apparently He's doing you know people nobody's heard of. So I volunteer doing requests now. Let's do podcasters. <laughs> yeah. Hey God, I mock you now. You're dumb. Smite me, and I'll be Christian. Just go right ahead, or, or right. say nothing. I'll stay atheist. Yeah. Right. Well, that's just the thing. Is like, do we mock God so much more every fucking week than this? Uh, yeah. Right. It's like when someone you know from high school has like a tweet go viral, and you're like, "Come on, man! I'm telling jokes every day." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God smiting her. She was at the Laugh Shack in Bayonne, New Jersey. What the yeah, fuck? right. <laughs> I've done all of your holy books, all of them. I'm onto just random crazy guys at this point. <laughs> and now, so of course, Ray has been silent for a full minute of one of his videos, and that's enough of that. So he vo's his way in, like elbows his way in with his voiceover to bitch about her <laughs> swearing and making fun of Jesus, and he points out that. We would never make fun of Islam. No, certainly not for a whole year. Could you imagine comedians making jokes about oh, Jesus Christ? A whole playlist on their YouTube channel. For yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the tone of it was like, well, why don't comedians make fun of Islam then? They're bigots. That's why they're mm -hmm. anti-Christian persecution bigots. That seemed to be the point he was making. Yeah. And from there, he transitions to. The problem is that people say Jesus loves you too much. Yeah, even when he hates your fucking guts. Right? Like he obviously hated that comedian lady. If if people hadn't told her that Jesus loved her, maybe she'd have known better. Than to mouth off to God. Right. And then he explains about how the Bible, yeah, it says, you know, there's love, God loves you, maybe a little bit. Jesus is love. But it's really about genocide and eternal damnation. Take it seriously. And right. I was like, oh, he's <laughs> He's going to have to cut soon because he's he's ruining his whole point. He's accidentally making a really bad point. And there it was. He cut right there yeah. after this. Well, yeah. So he explains that, you know, oh, well, you might think John 316 is about universal love. And I'm like, it's about human sacrifice, dude. I feel like you've got an easy argument to make. That and he's like, it's about human <laughs> sacrifice. <laughs> Thanks. Stop. Thank don't, you. No, 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 don't no preempt me. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't interrupt me now. It's about human <laughs> sacrifice. God <laughs> damn it. <laughs> I'm glad we're never live for these moments because we just have this weird, awkward stillness moment next to Ray where we're like, OK, on the same page with Ray Comfort. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Got to check. I'm not wearing stupid sunglasses. We're OK, finishing nope, each other's sentences. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right. Right. We all just start fucking. But <laughs> <laughs> this is how we knew it was going to end, Ray. This is how we knew ever since I got that first taste. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Well done. So that gets us two minutes and 27 seconds into the video. We are hooked so he can stop pretending that this is new shit and just start bothering random high people on the street with his are you a good person shtick. Random high girl on her break. <laughs> I love this. She is very stoned. Very stoned. Just and drastically. Like 17. Yeah. Right. Like, so let's be super clear. We're like, this is a 17 year old high for the third time or something that he's found. Mm -hmm. There's like, there's a bong just out of the frame that she ripped nine times right before this video. happened. The guy, the black guy next to her is standing in front of it, I think. Right. Like, he's, yeah. that's why he doesn't wave or much to the left or right. Yeah. <laughs> the cut footage from this interview is Ray just saying, are you sure you haven't seen a skunk around here? Because I smell a skunk. <laughs> And so, you know, of course, and this leads into the whole Ten Commandments thing. You know, have you told more than zero lies in your life? Have you stolen more than zero times? Well, then you're not a good person. Uh, real quick, because I am desperate for any deviation from the norm here. He does ask this stone 17 year old what you call someone who steals. And she says a stealer <laughs> to which he says 
no, no, they're from Pittsburgh. You call him a thief. And I'm like, wow, you've heard that before. <laughs> wow. Did you tell her to set that up where you're like, oh, no, I got this amazing pun. I need you to set this up. <laughs> say, we're going to cut and we're going to come back in. It's going to be amazing. It's like off the cuff. I just thought it's a stealer. How many high people has Ray bothered right. that he had to develop that line? Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Also, I'm pretty sure stealer is a word that is and then you know, it would a be person who steals. Correct. Yeah. I mean, it's not underlined on my fucking notes here, so. I mean, Squiggle guy killed himself in our notes long ago, so you can't trust him. That's true, yeah. yeah. He also, immediately after that, turns to the black guy next door and is like, come on, dude, I know you steal. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, and then he asks about using the Lord's name in vain, and they're like, well, yeah, yeah. And, and, and he's like, would you use your mom's name as a cuss word? And I'm like, technically, like, I use motherfucker and she's masturbated, I'm sure. Yeah. So, like, maybe her nickname. <laughs> I've called my brother a son of a bitch. Does that count? I mean, I just, I, yeah. I feel like I, so, like, I almost, like, Felt like that was a goal that I had not yet achieved. <laughs> yeah, I'm in. There's a level of profanity I haven't reached yet. Well, hold on a second, Ray. Next time I stub my toe, I'm just going to be like, oh, Lee Bennett Hopkins Award winner Liz Rosenberg. Oh, that one got me. Ow. <laughs> Do some people say yes to that question? Like, yeah, because he specifically says, Do you use your mom's name as a synonym for shit when you curse? Do you say instead of shit? Your mom's name. Well, instead of the S word, but yeah, uh huh. I'm, I'm assuming he meant shit. Yeah, yeah. He could he could have meant something else. Yeah, honestly, he could have meant suck. Do people do that? I think that was supposed to be an analogy to using the Lord's name in vain. It would be like using your mom's name as a cuss word. That's what he was aiming for. Or maybe that's just his way of saying your mom is shit. <laughs> He's just going roundabout for it, I guess. Yeah. And hey, it's not out of the question because he then follows that up with this is very serious. It's punishable by death. And I just want to say, if I'm stoned in 17, that is not what you want someone that close to your face to say. <laughs> the camera is so goddamn close to them. How does he get? Does he just have the camera like in his hand when he and he's just like putting it next to their face? I'm sure he does. And of course, we should point out that this girl is like slowly backing away the whole time, desperately trying to escape, nervously laughing like the she, she can make it go away with that or something. <laughs> oh. And that's before he starts explaining to her that she, you know, deserves to burn in hell forever for being a vile slut. Yeah, I, I loved it when he was like, have you ever looked at anyone with lust? And she was like, nope. And he's like, oh, that fucks up my, my thing. How about you, guy, man? <laughs> and he's like okay okay all right i'm the one <laughs> not the child i work with right there to be clear <laughs> also you can see so he, she's trying to back away very clearly like everybody in all of ray comfort's fucking videos and he knows it's coming because he's experienced this many times so he starts talking a little bit faster and not leaving any pauses yep. for people to social contract jump in and be like all right that's enough. Andy, and well, like he sees them about to start doing that, and he just fires into his next sentence, his next stupid question. Yeah, it's the worst. Yeah, and this is, of course, when her she, he's like, she's giggling, and he's like, "Wait, why are you laughing? I'm talking about important stuff like hell." And he's like, "She's like, because my boss is standing right behind you, going like, I called this motherfucker and told him to come bother you because you took too long on your 15." This so good. <laughs> boss, it's the best. Is the worst. Look, I don't know if this girl is listening. If she is, if someone could get in hold of her, someone tell her she never has to cut her 15 short again. Right? <laughs> Just like, oh, well, no, I actually had time to talk to that crazy Australian guy about what a slut I was. So yep. I believe I have 46 seconds left. Uh, yeah, Tiffany. exactly. <laughs> Yeah, but no, the boss comes out and this this girl is just like, hello, boss. I am blinking very violently and patting my head. Hello. <laughs> no, this guy's awesome, but I am doing those two things, as you can I, see. I am trapping my thumb with my fingers. Did you notice that bit? Oh, my God. And then the boss is just like, oh, sounds like you're having a good time. All right, bye. Yep, yep. And then goes back inside. I'll be in here doing all the work. Yeah. And then you can see during the rest of the conversation in this little clip, the like th this girl starts to laugh like four or five different times after the boss goes back inside. The boss is 100% popping up in the window and giving her the finger and being no like, oh, question. You. Yeah. Don't take more than 15. <laughs> well, yeah. And then and like, she's like, oh, do you need help? She literally says, do you need help? And, and the girl's like, I guess I don't want to say out loud that I need help. No. And then we quit right back to Ray going like, okay, so you're like a murderer who's killed young women. He literally says who's killed <laughs> yeah. young women. His example <laughs> of a criminal is a man who has murdered multiple young ladies. And I wrote in my notes, hey, Ray, quick note, buddy, maybe get a different example. You can think of a different example, right? Yeah. 
anything slightly less specific would be yeah, great. That'd be especially when you're talking to a young lady. You know, maybe someone who works at Jumba Juice. Right. <laughs> Murdering multiple twains? No, that's the, you, that's more specific. You, you did, made it worse. It's you did make worse it worse now. Dave, you hear it? Dave and Elliot. Is he getting worse at the judge metaphor? <laughs> right? Because he does the, he, he does the like Jesus can pay you fine mm -hmm. thing, but it, he gets lost in the weeds in the city. He's like, you know how there's a judge and he's also the lawyer and he made uh -huh. all the laws because he killed himself right. for you? Well, that's, I no. am good at metaphors. And you know how he's that, you know how that judge is kind of like a parachute? Okay. Oh, fuck. Fuck. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, like at the Starbucks line when the person buys the one and then they send it, it's like, it's like that with torture. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I lost my train of thought. He says, that's why I never tell people that Jesus loves them. I'm like, well, damn it. Stop finding things we have in common, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> and then I love this because she, you know, she's just nodding along, nodding along. Yeah, whatever's going to make you go away. And she's like, and he's like, all right, well, I'm done. Would you like this free Bible? And they're both like, nope, sure don't. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> this is where he gives them the fake money. Yes. Uh-huh. I will murder you. This is the <laughs> fake money that people leave as fucking tips. It yep. looks like money. Well, it's worse than that. And it's a tract. And they leave it at a restaurant. It is the only thing worse than fake money. It's a fake stack of money. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then, okay, so normally that's where we would end, right? Because that's where the video ends. But it carries on for like 90 seconds trying to sell us shit from Living Waters Ministry. And it's yes. Ray Comfort. So, of course, it's all fucking glorious. Okay, guys, I really want all of it. <laughs> yeah, right. No, every single thing. I was like, well, that could be a segment. That could be a whole segment on this show. <laughs> I want to do the evidence Bible, which includes the yes, the top 200 questions from non-believers. And cults. It's got cults. He says yeah. it includes cults. The cults like Catholicism. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yep. It even talks about cults. And he turns the page and it says Mormonism at the top. And then yep. Catholics after that. And atheism, the cult. Yes, of atheism. the cult yep. of atheism as well. We're, we're very culty about it. And then there's a, there's a how to tell random strangers that they're lustful sinners who deserve to burn in hell starter kit. They have a starter kit. Okay, genuinely million dollar idea. Are you ready? Stopper kit. <laughs> yep. <laughs> right. Someone hands you a chick track. You hand them back a chick track. They open it up. Fuck yourself. Yeah. There you go. Right. It's got a coin that says "fuck yourself." There's a million dollar bill in there. Turn it over. Fuck yourself. God. Keith just... Enright's going to murder you. <laughs> Open this sealed envelope. Yeah. I so... pop out. I murder you. Anthrax. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you I folded myself right in. And I did this. Uh, spent a lot of time on yoga just for this bit. Just for this. And then, okay, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I thought I was maybe crazy, but did this happen at the end? Did he say, <laughs> so one of the things in the magic kit is, Shitty fake coins. Ten commandments gold. coins, yes. Ten commandments, Ten commandments coins. coins, yep. Does he say? <laughs> you know what I did one time? I, I used these to start a street fight between a pack of homeless orphans by throwing them into the street and they all got into a fight. Okay, bye. End of video. I'm not crazy, right? That happened? He says, I've seen teenagers get into fights. So I've thrown these out on the sidewalk and watched teenagers fight okay. each other over who gets them. He said that, right? Yes. He did say that. And that's the end of the thing. And then, and it's like, buy your own and watch teenagers fight on your sidewalks. Yep. <laughs> what is happening? Yeah. I, I feel like he meant to cut that and didn't. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll put in something normal in post. <laughs> like meat between rabbit dogs. All right, everybody. I'll see you next time. Yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> while I mark up the evidence Bible in our upcoming God Awful Book selection list, I suppose we can close things off for the night. But we'll be back soon with another God Awful Mini. Before we duck and cover tonight, I want to remind you to grab your tickets for free flow. If you're going to be in or around Orlando, Florida on the weekend of March 4th through the 6th, I'm going to be giving a talk on Sunday. But if you catch me on Saturday, you can wish me a happy birthday in person, which would also be awesome. Check the show notes for links to get your tickets. Anyway, that's all the blast movie we've got for you tonight. But we'll be back in 10,022 minutes with more. Can't wait that long. Be on the lookout for a brand new episode of our sister show, The Skeptocrat, Day being at 7 Eastern on Monday. An even newer episode of our sister show's hot friend, God Awful Movies Day, being at 7 Eastern on Tuesday. And an even newer episode of our half sister show, Citation Need a Day, being at noon Eastern on Wednesday. Uh, 
obviously this show would feel empty if I neglected to thank Keith Enright for being a heartbreaker, Eli Bosnick for being a dream maker, and Lucinda Lusions for being my love taker. I also want to thank Mike from the Rational Black Thought Podcast for providing this week's Farms with quote a little longer than usual, but hey, when you're trying to figure out what the fuck is up with Mitch McConnell, that takes a minute. But most of all, of course, I want to thank this week's and last week's most mellifluous mammals, Earl, Marco, Ian, Adonijah, Richard, Jezebel's human, Scott, and Calvin, who are so hot and NASA had to put heat shields on both sides of the Parker Solar Probe. I agree with that 100%. James Dorian, Brad, Kevin, Royce, and Daryl, and let's sign Heath up for Christian Mingle, whose IQs have more digits and decibel than mine have in binary. And KJ, Sean, Lex, Steve, Am, Joshua, Alex, the trans girl, Yadiel, and Julie, who are so smooth that we should really consider using them as our go-to analogies whenever the world is ready to move on from comparing shit to the asses of infants. Together, these 25 foxy freethinkers four win a fistful of their fortune this week to fund the furtherance of our fulminations against faith by giving us money. Not everybody has the money it takes to give us money, but if you do, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash scathing atheist whereby you'll earn early access to an extended ad-free version of every episode, or you can make a one-time donation by clicking on the donate button on the right side of the homepage at scathingatheist.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the offices of P. Andrew Torres, Tim Robinson handles our social media, and our audio engineer is Morgan Clark, who also wrote all the music that's used in this episode which was used with permission. If you have questions, comments, or death threats, you find all the contact info on the contact page at scathingatheist.com. Oh, Lee Bennett Hopkins Award winner, Lee Rosenberg. That's <laughs> oh. Do you want to do that again and get your mom's I name do, right? But get my name for it. I do want to get my, my mom's name right. That's wow. okay. <laughs> yes, yes, please. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved.